We have been working with the pendulum equation in the last video, I think it was video number 23, we had it in this form that involved an elliptic function. We can cancel out the square root of 2 on each side, leaving us with this equation. Uh, this, of course, is just gravitational acceleration. That's the length of the pendulum. This is the period of the pendulum. And we have this elliptic function now. And with most elliptic functions, uh, they cannot be expressed in terms of elementary functions. But it turns out that this one you can. And the uh, way to understand that or the way to approach it is to expand this out in a Taylor series type of expansion. We'll address that in just a moment. Remember, the playlist for all the videos is at the website, digital-university.org. Now, here in the denominator, we've got the square root, or this is 1 minus k squared sine squared phi to the minus 1 half power. which we have written right here. Now, again, if you go to the, uh, the website, and if you click where it says um, combinatorics and probability videos, and you scroll down there, you see that we deal with binomial expansions that have a negative exponent. And we actually proved in that video that this type of expression equals this when we expand it out with a Taylor series type operation. So this is equal to 1 plus 1 half k squared sine squared of phi. Then the next term is add 2 to this. We have 1 half times 3 halves over 2 factorial. Then the next term is add 2 to this, we have it now to the 6th, then here we have 1 half, 3 halves, 5 halves over 3 factorial, and it keeps repeating with that pattern. Now, here this would then be 3 over 2 times 2 is 4 times 2 is 8. Here we have 5 times 3 times 1, that's 15. This is 3 factorial, that's 6, times 2 is 12, 24, 48. Now the next term then would be, this would now be to the exponent of 8 for the k and the sine phi term. This is 105 divided by 384. And it turns out that there is a um, pattern to this sequence, a convenient one. First of all, notice that what's in the numerator, 1, 3, 15, 105, um, those are all odd numbers. And what's in the denominator, those are even numbers. Now to see the pattern that's involved, what we would do is, for this term, we'll have that correspond to an n equal 1. This is for an n equal 2, n equals 3, n equals 4. Now if we do that, then eventually we can realize that the numerator has this expression. It's always an odd number, 2n minus 1. Let's work with this term here when n equals 4. So we'd have 2 times 4 is 8, minus 1 is 7. Now if we had just 7 factorial, that would be 7 times 6, and so forth. But when you see the double exclamation, this is an odd number. So now when we take the sequence, we use only the odd numbers in it. So it's this, and that equals 105. Now in the preceding term, this one, n equals 3. 3 times 2 is 6, minus 1 is 5.
and that's 15. So there's our pattern for the numerator. It is 2n minus 1. The double exclamation means that if this is an odd number, which it is, then in the factorial you consider only the odd numbers in that factorial. And the denominator, that's the same thing except it involves even numbers. Here we have n equals 3. 3 times 2 is 6. This is an even number, so now in the factorial sequence we consider only the even numbers. So that's 6 times 4 times 2. That's 48. So the denominator is 2n with the double exclamation point, always even numbers. And remember it said that n starts with this. That's n equal 1, n equal 2, n equal 3, and so forth. So you have this term, 1 plus this expression. That is what this equals to. And this is a negative exponent, so this is in the denominator. right here, but now when we expand it out, to get this term, this will now be in the numerator. So what we're going to do is rewrite this integral using this expansion. So let's do that right now. So we had this elliptic function. Integral from 0 to pi over 2. And this is this. So we're going to write this in. And we have these terms. OK, we had this integral. Now for this, we put in this, giving us this integral. And here we have just the integral of d phi going from 0 to pi over 2. So that part is just pi over 2. Then we have plus the remaining integral. These terms we can take to the outside. So we have plus the sum. And that was at n starting at 1. Then we had k to the 2n. Now we're going to have the integral from 0 to pi over 2 sine of 2n phi d phi. Also, let's be clear about this. Um, we explained this and this n equals 1, that's 2, n equals 2, which is 4, n equals 3, that's 6. This is going to be to the 2n for the k and the sine phi term, which we have right here. But now then, what we had originally, this elliptic function integral now has this expression. 
And what's interesting about it is this is a beta integral. And we solved that in a previous video. Um, again, if you go to the website and click where it says free calculus videos, then scroll down to where it says integral functions. And then in that group there, we have beta integrals. And we have one specifically where we had a sine function raised to an even power. And we know what the solution to that is. We solved it in that video. raised to an even power of phi d phi. And again, we're not going to do it here because we did it previously. But what we have is this equals pi over 2. And we have the sum 2n minus 1. right here. So in place of this integral, we can put this in right here. Now let's see what that's going to give us. This will equal then, if we put this in place of that integral, we have pi over 2 plus pi over 2. So we're going to factor that out. We have pi over 2 times 1 plus, now here we have k2n, we have then this term times this term. So we're going to have this summation of 2n minus 1 divided by 2n and that's going to be squared. Then we have this. So starting at n equal 1 to infinity. So this, this expression that we have right here, that then is the final solution to this elliptic function. And notice that we do have it in terms of elementary functions. Now, remember though what k is from our previous videos. That was a substitution where k equaled the sine of theta m over 2. Theta m was our maximum displacement, our maximum angular displacement. So in place of k, we can put this in. So we're going to have sine theta m over 2 raised to the 2n power. There. This then is our final expression for this elliptic integral, and it's equal to this. That's the length of the pendulum. This is the period, the period divided by 4. So finally then we can say that we'll have this equation then. It took a ways to get there, but we finally made it. Uh, well, t the period, that will equal the square root of L over G, and then we'll bring the 4 over here, but 4 divided by 2, that's going to be 2, so we have T equals the square root of L over G times 2 pi, 4 times this, then we have times 1 plus this stuff, the summation and this
this term is squared times the sine to the 2n, the maximum angular displacement divided by 2. And then finally, this is the equation for our pendulum. Now this video is running a little bit long. Um, in the next video, the final one in this pendulum e equation series, this starts at n equals 1 to infinity. Let's expand this out and see what it looks like. But this then is the pendulum equation. So let's expand it out and then look at it in a little bit more detail. But let's wait and do that in the next video. But the point then is that It depended upon solving this elliptic function, and this elliptic function, it turns out, did have a solution that we could express in terms of regular functions. That was this. But anyway, here then, this is the period for a pendulum, not just for small angles, but for any angular displacement.